Okay, I want to talk about the Native Americans. Uh, a lot of people still, you know, still refer to them as Indians, and you have the Bureau of Indian Management. So either term, but anyway, there's um, something I've been noticing, and um, you know, we we were we were taught in the schools that Native Americans are Asian people that crossed the Bering Strait and came into the Americas about 15,000 years ago and populated it. And uh, the whites came over in uh, 1492, and you know, the um, Vikings, and now they prove they came in the year 1000, and that was our alleged first contact. Okay, you know, if you know my research, you know I know it's complete baloney. Uh, there were multiple migrations, and um, you know they came by boat. They were coming, you know, um, across the Pacific and the Atlantic. Now I've read somewhere that um, getting over to the Americas is actually like much shorter to get to by the Atlantic Ocean versus the Pacific Ocean, and that was by James Adair. Um, he's a uh, author, he wrote a book about the Native Americans in the late 1700s and the things that he was discovering. And he he completely felt that the Native Americans were Hebrews. Now, James Adair um, was Irish, but he also, um, I believe he think, uh, was also Chickasaw or associated quite a bit with the Chickasaw. Anyway, he uh, wrote the history of the American Indians and uh, tried to prove out that they were Hebrew, Jewish, based on looks and rituals and uh, the many similarities. And uh, there are tribes of Cherokee that say that they're Jewish and they tested DNA positive for ancient European. And um, they believe that they came from the Middle East, which makes sense because they tested positive for Mediterranean. It's the Central Band of Cherokee, and I just put a screenshot up of their site. And um, they tested um, DNA-wise um, as coming from the East Mediterranean and Mideast that are not the results of a recent admixture. So these people are caucasoid. And what I've noticed is um, a lot of these natives out on the East Coast, I know there was a lot of mixing with the British and um, Irish when they came, but some of them look Asian and some of them look Caucasian or a mix. And this uh, one particular fellow, Cornstalk, uh, what's interesting is they'll show him in different portraits looking different. Like in one portrait, he'll look Asian. In another, he'll look completely Caucasian. And um, it's in, you know, you have to wonder what, what the truth is and what is going on. But he was a leader of the Shawnee Nation and. Um, he lived from 1720 to 1777, and he was very opposed to the European settlement west of the Ohio River. And then, um, basically, they got into big battle, and um, he his uh, group tribe killed off a lot of settlers, and eventually he was killed. Um, by an American militiaman at Fort Randolph. But um, the most interesting thing to me about this guy is his grave at uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia. And if you take a look, it's um, an obelisk. And an obelisk is the symbol for the penis of Osiris. So what is an obelisk doing there? Yeah, why would they give this guy's grave an obelisk? And, um, you know, that has nothing to do with Native American um, culture, so to say. I, I don't see any obelisks related to any tribe. And um, they gave him a whole memorial and this obelisk. Um, a 
And they say that his ghost uh, still haunts the area. Uh, and especially the people that were murdered off by him. Now, um, he basically was, like I said, um, Shawnee. There's the Iroquois that I find interesting as well. They had an Iroquois nation or confederacy. And um, they were known as the Six Nations, Mohawk, Onondaga, Oneida, Cayuga, and Seneca, and then Tuscarora. Uh, but, um, you know, there's also Iroquois tribe, but um, I find it interesting if you start looking at these people in that Iroquois, well, first of all, the whole Iroquois Confederacy is very similar to the structure of uh, the United States government. And um, it was inspired by a uh, Native American who had a vision, and he wasn't a very good speaker, but he had this awesome vision of a tree with an eagle at the top. And um, he got somebody to work with him and explain the vision that he was given to get the people to live in peace. And it included this tree with the symbol of this, this eagle. And um, that's, you know, and then they ended up electing um, various um, people to be their government, and it was uh, matriarchal, along a lot of matriarchal um, lines. Yeah, I mean, uh, the, the person that had the vision was um, uh, Deacon Aweeda, who was known as the Great Peacemaker, and Hiawatha was the person that worked with him to explain the vision and, and create this um, nation. And um, before that, they were fighting quite a bit. And um, this vision that, that this uh, Native American was given um, brought peace to that area. But as I was saying, um, many of these people uh, look very Caucasian or somewhat Caucasian to me. I'm going to put this Mohawk. Um, war and political leader Joseph Brandt in this video as well. Now that was one picture of Joseph Brandt. Here's another picture on Wiki, off of Wikipedia. It's a 1776 portrait of Brandt by leading court painter George Romney. And from what I can tell, um, I know uh, from reading this, his sister was a consort of a British um, diplomat, but from what I can tell, he was Iroquois. There wasn't anything, any kind of mixing. But, um, I mean, really, give me a break. How Caucasoid does it get? And why are there different portraits? You know, some are trying to make it less obvious, and, and then you get a, a, a portrait artist who's clearly showing you what the guy looked like. Okay, so on this East Coast, you know, these were Europeans that came here. And, um, you know, a lot of them inter interbred once the uh, settlers came. And um, some of them basically, um, you know, still keep to themselves. But there's some variance in it. And the other thing is they have this sloping head, which is interesting as well. Um, but again, why would you use an obelisk for Chief Cornstalk of the Shawnee tribe, who also looked Caucasoid? Um, and I'm, I'm just looking quickly. I, I just can't see that he was um, part European you know, in the Wikipedia real quick, uh, a mix or anything from the settlers. So here again, you know, major cover-up, 
and there's differences in the portraits of these um you know chiefs that were out on the east coast and um you know as clear as day take a look you know your eyes don't deceive you now on the west coast i tend to to feel that a lot of the native americans look more asian to me but i do believe there's also a mix as well and um you know dna and their and their history and their stories will will tell that so you know another mystery that's all okay thanks and i just want to show you one last thing there's a monument to the battle of point pleasant it is also a, a very large obelisk and um this is the um the war between um Shawnee Chief Cornstalk and the Virginia militia and, you know, after they um, massacred a bunch of settlers. So here you have a giant obelisk at, at the massacre site or at the, at the, the um, war site, so to say. And then you have one at his um, grave. 